I saw this excellent video about a KGB defector who was working with the Soviet Union to undermine America. And what he was explaining about the Soviet Union's tactics against America, I realized also apply to Muslims and also applies to Islam and the effort to ideologically subvert the Muslim community. So first of all, what does it mean to ideologically subvert a community? When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process. The way that this KGB defector was explaining it, the whole goal is to create confusion, to change people's perception of reality. So much so that even when they have facts in front of them, they will be confused. They won't know how to act. They won't know what conclusions to make about what is real and what's not real. That's ideological subversion. So how does this happen? The KGB de defector gave a few steps. Demoralization, it takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result, the result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated, they are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind, even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid of society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of the uh, of, uh, United States society. Very crucial is the step number one of demoralization. Demoralization takes 15 to 20 years. Basically, it's a process of education where you are injecting foreign ideologies into the subjects or the students' frame of reference, the way that they think. The more that you're able to inject these foreign ideologies, the more confused the student gets. This is extremely applicable to the history of Muslims in modern times. I'm not going to give you a full history of how this has been done, but let's focus on the last two decades since September 11th in 2001. We find so much incursion from foreign ideologies, liberalism, secularism, feminism, Marxism. These kinds of ideologies have really penetrated into the way that Muslims in the West are taught Islam. Part of the reason for this is because of the quote-unquote celebrity scholar culture. Unfortunately, you have many of these scholars so who after September 11th, their entire methodology for teaching Islam changed and shifted. Now their priorities and what they talk about have completely been transformed. No longer are we talking about, for example, the Ghazawat of the Prophet No longer are we talking about the important subject of Jihad. No longer are we teaching authentic information about Al-Wala' wal-Bara. 
loyalty and disassociation. No longer are we talking about these important subjects because they're politically incorrect, because they are going to bring negative scrutiny on Muslims. So the entire dawah changed. The entire way of teaching Islam changed in the West because of September 11th. That was 20 years ago. So the demoralization process happened, has happened by now because the people who are taught, the Muslims who are taught in that generation 20 years ago, now they're the Imams. Now they are considered shuyukh. Now they are teaching uh, this kind of ideologically corrupted version of Western Islam or Americanized Islam. This is what we are experiencing today. And no matter what kind of proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah, from the Sirah, from the uh, tradition of Islam, whatever proofs that you can bring, they're not going to change their mind. They've been demoralized. They've been brainwashed. Their ideologies are now not Islam, not Islamic orthodoxy, but liberalism, secularism, feminism, in all of these kinds of ways, they have been brainwashed and now we're suffering from that in this day and age. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. Most of the American politicians, media and educational system trains another generation of people who think they are living at a peacetime. False. The United States is in a state of war, undeclared total war against the basic principles and the foundations of, of this system. So step one is de demoralization. Step two, normalization. How do you normalize the current situation that we're in? And this is, again, we find a lot of preachers, imams, scholars who are pushing normalization of the current status quo. What's the current status quo? We live in a world where there is no khilafah. We live in the world where there's no country that truly and faithfully implements the sharia and Islamic normativity, morality. We live in a world where Muslims are being subjugated by all kinds of dictators and oppressors. And then what do you have some scholars saying? You have some scholars saying that, look, there's no problem with this. There's no problem with not having khalifa. There's no problem with not having anywhere implement Islamic law. There's no problem with dictators. Just obey, 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 obey. Don't open your mouth. Don't even criticize this current status quo. This is normalization. You're normalizing the situation. And in the West, we also have this idea of social justice Islam. What is social justice Islam? That the most important thing that a Muslim can do is fight for civil rights as a minority. As a minority, we have to be concerned about our civil rights as a minority and the civil rights of others as a minority. The thing is that the most destructive lies mix truth and falsehood. Yes, Muslims should be fighting for our rights within Western countries, but is that the highest concern? Is that the most important priority for us? Unfortunately, in the minds of many Muslim youth, these higher goals of khilafah, of implementing sharia, of spreading dawah, calling to Islam, these are no longer on the radar. These are no longer anywhere in the consciousness. Instead, it's all about social justice and civil rights. This is lowering the bar. This is confusing Muslims. This is normalizing a situation that is far less than ideal. This is how ideological subversion works. What's the solution to this? Number one, education, authentic education that is based on Quran, Sunnah, Ijma, tradition, orthodox Islam. Number two, teaching the dangers of liberalism, secularism, feminism, these foreign ideologies showing how Islam is morally uh, superior to them, how Islam is rationally more coherent than them. And then third, making sure that our leaders and who we take as religious role models aren't throwing us into the arms of the enemy, aren't throwing us under the bus, aren't normalizing these kinds of ideologies and normalizing the current situation of the Muslim community. These are the three steps that we can take to counteract ideological subversion and help ourselves, help our families, help the ummah in this day and age. Bi'ithnillah.